Okay, <clears throat> by now you understand a little bit about the breathing, about how to get the read started, about how to hold a note. So the next stage really is to put the saxophone together and my suggestion here, well it works for me, but I find that if you were to play this note or this tone, which is the finger at the thumbs always on the back, have three fingers on your left hand, one, two, three, and two down here. Now this, for some reason, I find this tone easier to, to get started with. And this is really the sort of sound you want to get. So get the sax started and just try and hold this note. <laughs> like that that's really I find that's a good start note for everything um, it works with my lungs works with my mouthpiece my fingers I'm sure you can you can start on other notes being just three fingers now so if you're getting that sort of sound then it's a matter of just running your fingers up and down the instrument um, what I find is that everyone's going to try and do this too too quickly, but it's more get the tone and just let your fingers sort of move in just a nice relaxed manner, but you're taking them up and down, up and down. So if I just play this bottom note and then take my next two fingers up and go back to that, you'll hear the, 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 the tone change. <laughs> smooth sort of tone change you're pretty much there on the sound and the tones and then of course you can just add the other fingers move more fingers <laughs> After that, we just combine it with some beats. I'll show you how to figure out the beats. Um, I'll show you where to get the beats and so forth. Uh, I'll give you some of the stuff that I, I use. Um, and from there, it's whether you can follow that tune, but the beat will take you into the tune. And then you can just sit there, and if I put that beat back on, So that really is me just putting a backing beat on and following it along. And I'm not really doing anything different than just moving my fingers up and down the scales. So I'm moving my fingers in basic patterns, very simple patterns. And one of the tricks is to try and slow it down. Don't think you're gonna um, do a Clarence Clement, you know, jamming with Bruce Springsteen. Um, yes, <laughs> this is where we're going though. So I have full confidence that if you're getting tones and if you can get that tone changed through moving your fingers, um, then man, we're, we're, we're <laughs> I'd say 85% there. So yeah, take it from there and just enjoy what you can, put a beat on if you've got one, put down one that I've got, and um, 
we can do this. This is a very simple beat, but most beats are very simple. Okay, I'm going to talk about tone changes here, and I'm going to call them tones as opposed to notes. Um, if I call them notes, everyone's going to start thinking about A's, B's, F sharps, and so forth. Um, I prefer to re sort of refer to them as tones because that's all it really is. I don't know whether I'm playing an A or B or C or whatever. I'm just playing tones, and I think that's the critical mass here. Is think of it in tones. It's just sounds. Um, now briefly, what this instrument has is effectively one scale. Six or seven notes. Um, if you take a, say, a big saxophone or a guitar, you've still got the same notes, but they'll play at different levels. So you have a bass being down, um, say a tenor or an alto being up higher and a soprano being very high. So they've got the same notes, but in various different octaves. A uh, big saxophone will have maybe two and a half octaves, the good guys can almost get three octaves out of it. Um, but this only has the one tone, uh, sorry, the one octave. Um, and that's really all you need. So, originally on the tone changes, effectively, it's just raising your finger. You can change the tones by moving your fingers, and you can change the tones by doing stuff with your mouth or your throat. Um, if you want to get, say, a growl, uh, which is that funky sort of bluesy growl thing and it's just a matter of humming when you blow so you can effectively make it sound like this is a standard tone now if I hum at the same time which is I'm blowing and humming then you get this funky growl which is sounds pretty cool now I'm doing that just by humming um, depends on how hard you hum as to how much of a growl you put in there. A soft hum is basically just going to sound like this. And if you really want to make a growl. Um, so at the moment on finger tones, it's just a matter of raising your fingers. But I'm going to talk about finger positioning. Um, it's about having relaxed hands and using the pad of your finger as opposed to the tip. And your pad should sit over there quite nicely. Now I say relaxed hands because the more relaxed hands you have, the sweeter the tone. Now that's something that's going to come through practice. Um, yeah, just positioning. Think about where your fingers go, but you want to use the whole pad to get right over the hole. That will ensure that the ear is sealed right around it. Um, and if your hands are tense, you'll get the tone, but the more you relaxed you can have your hands, I think you'll find that the tone gets sweeter and sweeter. Okay, so that's just moving your fingers, blowing, moving your fingers at the same time. Um, the other range of tones is if you blow, once you've got a, a once once your pump or your diaphragm is working really well, um, and your mouthpiece is sealed up and you're getting a nice tone, you can change the pitch by just relaxing your mouth or or tensing tensing up your throat. So if I take one tone. <laughs> So by relaxing your mouth or your throat, uh, once again that alters the airflow going over the reed and hence you'll be able to change tones. Um, obviously volume as well, the harder you blow, the louder it's going to be. The softer you blow, the, 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 the quieter it's going to be. So just in one note, you've got a range of, of tones you can put in, um, a range of sort of effects from your mouth, 
these all add to the dynamic of this instrument. So um, yeah, have a, have a practice. Just, just relax your mouth on the various different notes. going to talk a little bit more about fingering and finger positions. Um, now this is vital to the uh, success of this instrument. A few days ago I was speaking to a, a friend of mine showing him how to play this and I was trying to explain this and, and he came up with a better suggestion as to how to explain it but effectively your fingers are walking down a log. Just like that. Now, as you go back up the scale, it is like you're walking back, just retracing your steps down, back down the log. So, uh, a lot of people are going to pick this up and start playing with their fingering. Um, it is, and I'm going to say now, and this is vital, your fingers always follow a sequence going down the scale and up the scale. Um, they can go from one, two down, two, three, same thing going back. What they can never do, and I say never, is make positions like that, that. It is always a sequence. So you can have from six fingers on, to three fingers on, to one finger on. They're all good tones. But you can't have your left hand fingers, sorry, your right hand fingers, on without your left hand fingers that's essential so effectively it's a sequence one two three four five and the same going back you can go from say six fingers on to one finger on um, five fingers on to one finger on five fingers on to three fingers on but your fingers always have to follow a, the same sequence you can never have that for argument's sake or three fingers and none up here you just won't get a tone. Um, hence, this is the sort of scale. Now, if you do something like that, you'll get a tone, but it'll be an off tone. Um, as you get better, you can play with these, but in the initial stage, always retain that walking down a log feeling and then retracing your steps back up the log. That is absolutely vital. Um, play with all different sorts of things, but yeah, just stick with that sequence in the short term and you will have great success. Okay, back to the, the tone changes. Um, you have the ability to, to blow individual notes. So effectively, <laughs> Um, it's one style, or you can slur the notes together. Now, obviously, the nicer thing to be able to do is to do a range of slurring and individual notes. Now, in order to create a sharp individual note, it's the start and the end. So... Now, effectively, what's happening is, is the air's coming out of your diaphragm over the mouthpiece. Um, this being the valve that creates the sound. Now, your tongue is effectively the switch that turns it on and off. So if you want to stop a note with a clean, sharp stop, I, you're effectively blowing and then flicking the reed with your tongue. That, that's a natural feeling you'll get. Um, so... That gives you that clean entrance and a clean exit to the note. So it's pretty much. I'll 
Alternatively, you can slur it. Um, now, as you start to progress, you're obviously going to do a combination of slurring and um, sharp short notes. You might slur three and then do three short ones. That's practice. That's what you're aiming for. But to get that nice, crisp, clean stop and start, it's effectively you're touching the, the, the vibrating reed with your tongue, which stops it vibrating immediately. Um, from there, you can move on to the next note. Um, now, a little bit about more about breathing, because that's the essence of this machine. Um, as a learner, you might find it, well, you will find it a, a lot easier if you stand. I'm, I'm sitting down at the moment. Um, had a bit of practice, so I can do it. But if you stand, you'll find that your posture is actually much better. Your lungs are working better. You can get more volume into your lungs. Um, you'll be able to play and hold notes for longer. Um, <laughs> So get into the practice of standing up. Um, it's not all sitting down. Sitting down, you tend to bunch your stomach up, which obviously affects your lung capacity. Um, so my recommendation really is that if you're starting out, do stand up. And um, if you stand up, you'll find once the beats go on, you, you can just move better anyway. So um, yeah, breathing's critical. Now, breathing in between notes. If your diaphragm's working properly, your stomach's going out, naturally you're dragging air back into your lungs. Um, the trick is to somehow get a, into a nice pattern of breathing. If you extend yourself, if you blow too much and run out of oxygen, then you've got to take a much greater volume back in. So when you're practicing, try and get a rhythm of breathing, maybe three, four notes, then take a breath. So. <laughs> Once again, it's practice, it's timing. Uh, don't worry about playing it slow. You'll find that it's, it's a lot easier to play it slow instead of trying to rip a whole lot of notes um, and concentrate on your breathing. Now, if you've got a good capacity in your lungs, once again, it gives you a lot more control over stopping and starting notes. You can hold a note a lot longer, a steady note. You can do a lot more with it in your tone changes in your, in your throat. Um, so yes, it's, you've got to practice your breathing. Um, once again, relax your fingers. All this helps with your, the breathing capacity. Um, but yeah, it's a wind instrument, so it's, it's fundamentally about your breathing. Um, so just practice short, sharp individual notes, practice slurring, so. <laughs> friend a while ago and, and um, he said something that was quite um, apparent to music and, and um, not bagging any brilliant musicians but his saying was a jazz musician will play a thousand chords to three people a blues musician will play three chords to a thousand people um, point being music isn't actually that complicated um, you know, good blues players only playing a few notes, but what he's got is he's got he's got the feel, he's got the moves, and he's got the tones, and that's what this instrument allows people to do. It's, it, you can play very simply, very few notes, but make it all connect up, and it it just rocks it as an instrument. Um, so yeah, blues isn't particularly complicated, it's it's a feeling, and that's why I'm not concentrating on trying to teach people notes and timing and so forth. That will come in the back beats and so forth and the tones that you pick up. Um, but yeah, you've, you've got a, a, a range of stuff you can do on this, and what I'm gonna do now, we're about to start the fun stuff and, and try and line up what you've 
been learning to date uh, with funky beats. Uh, I'm going to show you how to um, move into a soundtrack, how to how to pace it out, and 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 um, basically get the feel. Um, something else. <laughs> That sort of makes me laugh as another friend once said like if you're playing the blues you've you've, you've got to have the look you've got to have it it's, it's all about the face and um after playing this you you do <laughs> understand why because blues is a feeling um you know it's it, it's generally a hard luck story it's a it's a girlfriend that's run away or a boyfriend that's that's taken off with another woman it's been you've been working hard for for no money you 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 know you're a little bit sad and that's what it is it's a feeling and um this instrument allows you to get that feeling and the, the the funny thing is you do make those faces because you're getting this feeling and you're feeling blue um hey, it's a bit of fun but, but it does seem to be that is that when you hit the moment the, the 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 sound where it all goes together if you i imagine if you took a photograph of your face it'll have some amazing bit of emotion on it um what you're hearing is the tone that's coming through here coming down your thumb up your arm and straight to your body and it's giving you that feeling of the blues and, and it makes you want to make faces and just move so <laughs> dead straight face. A lot more fun, put the facial expressions in. Okay, we're about to move on to some backing tracks, playing with backing tracks. So I'll just explain my music setup. Um, I download backing tracks from a range of different sources. I'll go over those a little bit later. Um, so my toy that seems to go a lot of places with me is stock standard Bluetooth speaker. It's a JBL one, it fits in my pocket. Link to my phone makes pretty everything pretty easy. So honestly, you can just smash out a a backing track just for this little setup it's got a lot of volume um, awesome sound quality out of this JBL speaker there's a range of different sizes um, so yeah highly recommended okay something else you can do with this very easily um, is mic it up so this is just a radio controlled mic, slips on the end of the sax, locks into position, position the mic. Now this is linked up to this setup here, which is largely a little amp. Um, I'll show you the, the brand. So that small, it has some features here, which gives you a delay, a bit of equalizer, obviously volume and a bit of gain. Uh, there's the pickup for the um, for the amp. It's Bluetooth, so it'll play your backing beats through it. But what it gives is a, just a, a few more sound effects. It also gives you a bit of volume. It's a cool little busking thing if you feel like busking or just jamming with your mates. Um, yeah, easy to carry and it, it really works. And so the sound you get, what I notice sometimes if I'm playing a Pink Floyd backing track or um, sometimes the tone just doesn't sound quite right coming out of here. So put a bit of echo in, gives you a whole lot of awesome extra sound effects. So if you have a listen to this, put the mic on. So. nicely um, but this just gives you a, um, a range of sound effects 
or an, an increased range of sound effects. You've got a lot of sound effects here, but sometimes it's nice to play with that echo. Um, yeah, just makes it sound that much cooler. <laughs> still listening we're now going to move in to the fun stuff which is to get playing this thing with beats by this stage if you're getting these nice tones and you're, you've worked out your your breathing your fingering and so forth you've worked out slurring and individual notes the next thing is to get some beats on and start jamming because that's what this is about and it doesn't really matter where you jam in your garage in a car on the street with your mates this is what it's about and if you master this i'm gonna say this is a life changer um i've spent a lot of time chasing adrenaline sports skiing deep snow surfing uh water skiing wakeboarding skateboarding the whole lot always going for that adrenaline feel now i can convincingly say that those sports are amazing but when this all comes together, you get that permanent adrenaline feel, and that's what's going to keep you. It, it's it's going to keep you coming back and picking this thing up. Um, it really is a life changer, and you can start this at any age. You don't have to be a youngster to learn this. You know, retired people, kids at school, it's all doable. Um, keep following this program, and what I'm going to try and do is. I'll teach you where to find backing beats. You can use a lot of the ones I, I use. I'll teach you how to download them. Um, I'll teach you how to get into them. You know, I, I, I'm working on a theory that the beat is your street and we're just walking up the street and looking up side roads and coming back to the street. Whenever we lose the beat, we just come back to the street. I'll explain this as we go, but just in the short term, what I'm going to do now is put on a bit of um, Bob Marley, um, No Woman No Cry. Now, in a million years, I don't think I'd ever be able to play this song, and I probably don't play it right, but it's one hell of a lot of fun when you do get the right tones. Um, it just sounds cool. So have a listen to this. This is just recorded, so the sound quality might not be as good as if I did a, a full-blown recording. This is just going straight from me to the camera, my Bluetooth speaker. So if I put on a uh, bit of No Woman No Cry and have a bit of a jam. Okay, so the beat is the street. You're walking up the street. So you've just got to find that beat and once you find it, then you can play with it. With this, you can almost come in anywhere, so you just got to find that tone. Thank you. 
So what I'm doing here... Okay, so what I'm doing there, I don't know what I'm going to play at any given time. I'm not following a, a, a series of patterns that I've memorised from the past. I'm just waiting for that sound to come in. The beat is the street, and I'm just cruising up that. And the music will guide you into the, the different little alleyways. Call them alleyways. Um, you're jamming along, and you know you want to go and have a look at a bit of a side street. So you might just have a basic... <laughs> Now that, for argument's sake, is, is just a simple little bit. And so, and then you hit a side street, and you want to go and have a bit of a look up there. <laughs> then you're going back to the street. So. <laughs> side street. It's cool straight. So follow the beat, just go up the street. Okay, then you start to lose the beat, so you just come back to the street. Until you get the beat back online and then the music will guide you through to the next side street and you can play like that all day um, if I play that Bob Marley song again I won't play it the same I'll never play it the same I can't remember what I did last time so I'm effectively just following the tone of the music um, I've got six notes a range of tones in my throat in my mouth um, a growl a, a so forth and so you're just making these sounds up and just trying to follow that beat. Now, I'll go back to some basic beats and I'll explain it in a slightly different, well, in the same fashion, but with a, small, a simpler beat that you can follow. Um, and once you get the basics, then it's just up to your imagination as to how you, you take it and what you do with it. So, okay, if I, <coughs> if I was to talk just a little bit about backing beats. Um, my suggestion here is if you download backing beats or you create some, Make them long enough. Uh, when I say long enough, you know, I'm talking six, seven, eight minutes long. Um, because what's happening is that as you start to play it, you might not pick that beat up immediately. Um, and you're going to play up and down the, 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 the range of tones. It's not going to be coming together. And then as long as you keep following that beat, keep going back to the street and, and following the beat, you'll eventually get it. Now, as a learner, it's going to take you a few minutes to get into this beat and, and what you don't want to happen is when that song if, if the song finishes after three and a half minutes you've got the beat at three minutes you've only got 30 seconds left to play um so if you make the beat the backing beat longer five or six minutes seven minutes um it allows you to get into the beat and when you find it you got time to play with it instead of having to stop stop your playing and then start it again so my suggestion would be at the start is is <clears throat> play longer backing tracks until you get comfortable and then of course you can you'll be able to you'll find you be able to get into this music a lot quicker and hence use shorter backing tracks but i quite like the long ones because you start jamming and, and you don't want to stop and so you don't want to have to stop and hit rewind or or <laughs> recue the, the music so my suggestion is um yeah use longer backing beats um as I said before, I'll take you through those situations. I'll put a whole technical section in here on where to find stuff, um, how to record, um, how to convert backing beats with an MP3 converter. I'm sure a lot of you will know this, but there'll be a, a range of people that don't. Um, how to put them onto iTunes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And, and um, yeah, so I'll, I'll put a whole technical section in at some stage down the, towards the end. So. Um, yeah, it's probably worth <coughs> thinking about that if you are looking for beats. Uh, yeah, just look for the slightly longer ones. In two and a half minutes, if, you, if, you, if you're learning, it might be the coolest beat. 
Uh, you can always put it on garage band and loop it, but um, yeah, I think uh, just just go for some some good beats that you're comfortable with, and, and if they're a bit longer, you'll find that um, you can find the beat a bit quicker, hang with it a bit longer, and of course this is all practice, and the more practice you do, the better you're going to get. It's as simple as that. start with just a basic backing beat and, and one that I use is you can find um, on garage band loops um, this one is the 60s shuffle drum set 03 um, now it's just a basic drum beat but if it makes you tap your foot or click your fingers to the beat then you can it's sort of showing that you can hear the beat. Um, so I sort of work on the theory that if I tap my fingers to something, then I can probably play it. Um, so this is just a, a, a basic drum beat. There's no frills to it, but it's very consistent. Um, because it's on the loops, I can hit play and it'll play forever and a day. Um, so have a listen. I'm going to just jam a little bit um, and I'll try and get into the beat. Then I'm going to go and have a look up the side street. Now I'm going to come back to the beat. Then I'm going to go and have a look at another side street. And slowly I'll weave a bunch of music into it. And, you know, it, it then becomes just up to you as to how creative you want to get. Whether you want to go in loud, whether you want to play soft. You know, you can, you can start by doing a screamer on the high notes. Or you can come in, you know, really low and slowly build up to it. Um, as a rule, I find it easier to start with the lower notes and try and get that little, the, the bassy section going on that's that's in most beats. Um, that's pretty much your, your core beat. Um, and then work from there and keep coming back down to the bass. So I'll put this on and have a listen. And if it makes you tap your foot, I'm pretty sure you can play this. So it's just a basic beat. So pretty much I'm just clicking my fingers to that beat. Now, because I'm clicking my fingers to that beat, it probably means I can play it. So <clears throat> somehow you've got to get into it. Now, as a rule, I'll stick, I'll start with the five fingers, kick that one off, and that gets me in down low. And I don't need to do too much, I can just play around low at the start. So Effectively, that's the street. That's the street I'm walking down. This beat isn't going to change. It'll go forever in a day. So you can play along or just listen to me play. Um, I'll run some more of this so you can play to it. But find the beat. So. So you've got to do with this. street. Now I'm going to find another side street to go up. some tones and you can growl in there if you want.
Okay, your turn. I'll let this run for a bit longer. Just try and find that beat. So you're clicking your fingers. That's the beat. That's your street. Start to follow it. And pace yourself out. Look for the little openings where you can get in there. Um, before looking up at the side street, just keep that beat going. I'll let you play. Now, if you're doing what I was doing, you should be smiling. Because you've cracked it. <laughs>